audit output has been paid for by the WZWA Network. Hello everyone and welcome to the WZWA Network and welcome to my review show here of AEW All Out from September 3rd, 2023 from the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Shy town baby. Uh, so here we go. Obviously, this has been a very interesting week for all elite wrestling. Uh, yesterday, I saw a lot of angry comments on people on Reddit giving up on AEW. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit tickled by it, to be honest with you. Uh, I was supposed to do this review with Juicy Boy, but since CM Punk got fired... Juicy Boy has now decided that it's not a, it's not worth his time, and he thinks that AEW is done for good. <laughs> um, so here I am alone doing this review of All Out 2023. Uh, I did watch Zero Hour, and on Zero Hour, uh, this is what took place. Uh, so the first thing I saw was Brian Danielson trying as hard as he can to make sense of him coming to Ricky Steamboat's aid to face Ricky Starks in the strap match on All Out. Um, despite the fact that Brian is a heel in the Blackpool Combat Club, he is really, really offended that Ricky Starks dared to uh, challenge a 70-year-old man to a strap match. <laughs> uh, I thought this was very forced. Um, he was forcing anger over the situation to make this match seem like it meant something. That's just what it was. If you disagree, you're wrong. Uh, there was a Prince Nana interview with uh, his crew, the Mogul Embassy, um, and I really loved it when Prince Nana was was talking about how when the, when one of his members win this battle royal. Uh, that's coming up where the winner gets to donate 20, uh, sorry, $50,000 to charity. Um, he was talking about how he had started his own foundation, which was essentially the money's just going to be funneled <laughs> through to him and his crew. We in the money, we in the money, whatever it was that he was singing. I, I'm pretty sure that's how he's saying it. That was really funny. Uh, so anyway, the first matchup on the Zero Hour pre-show was a battle royal and I'm not going to announce. I'm not going to announce everyone who was in the match, but <clears throat> you know, there's 20 guys, right? Uh, so the winner donates money to charity, fifty thousand dollars. Tony Nice gets on the microphone before the match begins and is going on about <laughs> wrestling's ri ridiculous, isn't it? He's going on about you know uh, trying to get everyone to do a, a, a training session with him right then and there, and he ends up getting eliminated first by everybody. And I'm thinking, what kind of human being is this Tony Nese character? Uh, and then once again, of course, Mark Sterling cops it. <laughs> he, of course, he's the one guy that gets nailed when he gets when Tony gets thrown over the top rope. Who's the one that gets hit in the head with the whole body of that human being? Mark Sterling. Brilliant. So I pop for that. Um, bit of a weird stipulation. Um, I'm wondering if they actually do donate the money or if it's a worked donation. Uh, why is there a group of people already being dived on by Commander? It's a battle royal. They have to do it, don't they? It's, just, it's like AEW. They, they can't help themselves, can they? Um, seeing Sean Spears was like quite interesting. I think to myself, what is going on with him lately? You, you haven't heard much about him. Uh, Daniel Garcia's dance move is fucked. Um, again, um, more complaints about Commander. Uh, he's holding his own against three massive men from the Mogul Embassy, Brian Cage and the, uh, I can't remember the name, of the Gates of Agony, sorry. Uh, get, get out of here. And, of course, yes, he got eliminated by all three of them. Thank you. Get him, get the fuck out of here. Um, Nigel McGuinness, he is a treat to have a commentary for something like this. It was obvious that Hangman Page was winning this, though. Come on. He's the biggest star in the match, former world champion, you know he's winning it. No one else on his level was in the match. It was mostly tag team members and and mid card guys. You knew Hangman was winning this. Um, uh, so you know, I was really surprised that the Chicago crowd weren't mad at Hangman after what had happened, what had transpired. And I'll talk about the CM Punk thing right at the end of this review. Um, 
I saw action on Dreddy in this match, and I'm like, that big win over Jericho really did a lot for him, didn't it? Uh, now he's in Ring of Honor and a tag team. Yeah, Ring of Honor. It's gone great guns there. Uh, it's a shame because Hangman, it, it was so obvious he was going to win. Uh, and I was a little disappointed that no one mentioned that Hangman and Brian Cage had their past together, especially the fact that they worked together at Double or Nothing 2021. Um, and I think they need to do more with Brian Cage. The guy's still very good, and he's kind of stuck in this random trio with Prince Nana uh, as his mouthpiece in Ring of Honor. And I think the guy could be in the main... Pro Imagine Brian Cage versus Claudio Castagnoli. Come on. That'll be interesting. Great finish, though, to this match. Let's move forward. Uh, the next match on the uh, Zero Hour, Hikaru Shida, Willow Nightingale, and Sky Blue. Uh, team up against Mercedes Martinez, Diamante, and Athena, the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Um, I'm feeling that this show is becoming very ROH heavy, and again, I'm not sure about it. Come on, man. Um, uh, the, uh, Nigel McGuinness, Excalibur, and Kevin Kelly were, were, were making jokes about um, you say potato, I say patata. And Excalibur said that he says patata as well. And then Kevin Kelly was like, no one says patata. And it's, it's true. And it made me laugh. It was the first time ever that Excalibur makes, has, has made me laugh. Most of the time, he does not make me laugh. Most of the time, I hate him. Uh, so, uh, you know what? I reckon there'll be women's tag team titles within the next year. I have a feeling because they can't help themselves. Uh, I feel like Tony highlighting ROH so much on this pay-per-view is to try and get Warner Brothers Discovery to make one of the shows an ROH show now that Punk is gone. I don't know. That's just an estimation. I just pulled that out of my bum hole. Uh, Sky Blue got dumped on her head with a spider German, which was really uh, interesting to see. <laughs> uh, again, things are not clearly defined with ROH and AEW. A lot of ROH title matches are on this show. Uh, and for me, I just feel like, again, if you have ROH behind a paywall, you want to make it special so people who are paying for it, know that they are getting their money's worth. If you can see your ROH people on AEW all the time, then why would you pay for it? You must be really desperate for content because from what I've heard, it's a very, very simple show, that on a club show. Anywho, uh, Sky Blue got the win. Yay, because she's so cute. Good bum too. We all know that. Uh, there's a nice little pick up. Uh, picture a package with Roosh who is clearly being depicted like a drug lord now I really like the video and I hope it leads to something for his crew who I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name of uh, the final match here on Zero Hour AEW World Trios titles the acclaimed with Billy Gunn take on Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, Satnam Singh with Karen Jarrett and Sanjay Dutt at ringside um you know, walking into this, you know who's winning this. You know Jeff Jarrett's team is losing again. I'm just sick of them losing, man. I think that they're a really good act. I think that when they nearly won the tag titles off the acclaimed a while back, that they should have actually won them because they actually deserved it as far as I'm concerned. And you know what? When they had that match where Aubrey Edwards was in the match and Karen Jarrett was wrestling as well, Karen should have beaten Aubrey in the match. I remember Aubrey talking about how, oh, you know, in situations like this, you know, the baby face has to go over in the end. And no, 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 no. You, you guys don't know how to book heat over there. You don't know how to book heat. Karen should have beaten Aubrey in that match. Let's get this team to have some heat on them, please. Anywho. Uh, by the way, Dennis Rodman is all a part of this as well. Uh, Max Caster's Fargo strut is terrible, by the way. Uh, Satnam Singh gets in the ring, finally getting to see him do some stuff. Very good for the big man. Uh, of course, Aubrey gets in Sanjay's face. Karen walks in with the guitar. 
Aubrey catches her, whatever. Aubrey and Karen argue. Then Aubrey pushes Karen over. Boring, boring, lame. Uh, then here comes Dennis Rodman. He sneaks in, grabs his guitar, smashes the guitar over Satnam Singh's head. Nice, bro. That's the way you do it for life. Right here, right here. Uh, and then anyway, after that, the acclaimed and Billy Gunn retain the titles by hitting all of their moves. Let's move forward. I find out now that uh, AEW All Out 2023 is three hours and 49 minutes long. Great. Just fucking great. Awesome. You know, we we, we just had an AEW pay-per-view that went four hours the other day and we've got to go through it again. Christ almighty. I hope next year when they do the Wembley Stadium show, I hope next year that they do All Out, like, I don't know, three, four weeks prior or post the All In show at Wembley please and please WWE don't book pay-per-views on the same weekend please everyone else don't book pay-per-views the same weekend there's it's enough already okay anyway first match up here on the main show the main pay-per-view ring of honor world tag team titles better than you baby the tag team champions of ring of honor for some reason even though that yes Adam Cole was a former ROH world champion MJF has never appeared for him at least in this version of ROH, and they're defending against the Dark Order. Wow, this is definitely a match that you need on a pay-per-view card, isn't it? The Dark Order, the most... <laughs> Look, there's nothing nothing against these guys. I like John Silver. I like Alex Reynolds. But this group is so done. They're done, man. It's so forced now. They don't need to be a part of it anymore. They need to be repackaged. They've got three members left. How sad is that? The, the Dark Order is the saddest state of affairs I've seen for a stable in wrestling history. They just won't die. They're the, they're the cockroach of AEW anyway. Um, I'm hating, but also kind of loving the MJF babyface stuff. I'm just looking forward to that moment where we find out that he was still a prick all along. It's going to happen. Uh, we know who's winning this. We know who's winning. They're, they're not losing the tag titles to the Dark Order. Uh, Evil Uno gets involved uh, at one stage, and then we get a chair to the base of the neck of MJF, and now he's been taken out of the match. So now Adam Cole has to fend off the Dark Order on his own. So it appears that the Dark Order are heels now, despite the last ROH pay-per-view where it appeared that they were babyfaces. Um, but anywho, I was thinking maybe Cole Cabana might show up, considering how uh, petty things are with the... I'll get to it. I will get to it at the end of this review. Trust me. Uh, I did pop for the double clothesline from the Dark Order. It's two versus one. And still, they couldn't get it together with Adam Cole. <laughs> uh, MJF stormed back out there to help. Good selling um, from uh, uh, MJF. Uno gets wasted on the ring apron thanks to a super kick from Adam Cole. Suck shit, dude. No one likes you. And then we get a double clothesline, and it was over. Uh, better than you, bay bay. Retain the ROH tag titles like anyone gives a shit. Let's move forward. ROH Television Championship. Samoa Joe takes on Shane Taylor. So it's clear that MJF and Joe will be working next. That's interesting. Um, I did like the fact that Joe gave him a little bit of a shove on his entrance. Very cool. Um, sorry, my voice is a little hoarse. Well, uh, you know, my name's Brett Hayman Hart, and uh, you know that uh, William Goldberg kicked me in the head like he was a horse. Um, <clears throat> so uh, anyway, uh, MJF ends up confronting Joe, and <laughs> Joe ends up choking MJF. And I was like, are they doing a play on Punk and Jack Perry? Because they better not be. Don't do it. Just ignore it. Just move on. I've seen some, oh, my God. I've seen some stuff with the Elite. There was a video with Kenny Omega pretending to drink Pepsi and hating the taste of it. and They're not funny. That's the thing about these guys. They're not funny. And I don't know why people go, oh, that being the elite so it's not funny. They're shit. They're humor's shit. So your sense of humor's shit, everyone. Anywho, let's get on with the match. Uh, it's great to see Shane Taylor on pay-per-view here. But again, he's Ring of Honor. Should this be an AEW slash Ring of Honor show. 
no, it doesn't matter. It's all the same fucking thing. Um, I was really glad Kevin and Nigel were on the call. They made it less excruciating with Excalibur. Joe was still going for it here. This is probably the biggest match in Shane Taylor's career. Shane was showing what he was made of. It was a great slugfest. Despite me questioning this being on an AEW pay-per-view, this was good Samoa Joe retains. Let's move forward. AEW TNT Championship. Luchasaurus with Christian Cage at ringside takes on Darby Allen with Nick Wayne. So again, popping for Christian coming out again in his stupid turtleneck, again with the TNT title around his waist, even though it, it, Luchasaurus is the actual champion. Uh, Darby was getting ragdolled early on here by Lucha, uh, and it was fantastic stuff. Uh, I loved Christian getting in Lucha's ear, talking so evilly to him about destroying and ruining the life of Darby Allen here. Allen was getting wrecked. You knew Lucha had to win this one. I love Darby's selling and grinning after the spot with the steel stairs where, where Luchasaurus placed the stairs on Darby's back and climbed the stairs and walked into the ring. He was groaning and screaming, and it was really realistic. Luchasaurus is now wrestling like he should have this whole time. Uh, his time in the Jurassic Express sucked. Uh, <laughs> great heat though this pay-per-view has been good so far Darby uh, just eats it with um, Luchasaurus as he attempts a cross body, great stuff and then of course Christian Cage uh, cops a dive from Darby Allen, which leads to him copying some more shit there's an avalanche code red for a good two count for Darby but Christian ends up threatening a concerto uh, Luchasaurus hits two tombstones, then the lariat to the back of the skull. Yeah, and then he wins the match. Thank you. And of course, some of the locker room empties to stop them from destroying and killing Darby Allen. Damn it. Uh, next matchup two, what was it? What was it called? Two meaty men slapping me or whatever. It's so like, grow up. What's wrong with you people? Seriously, Miro takes on powerhouse Hobbs here. Uh, finally, Miro is back. It's ridiculous that he's been gone so long. Oh, he because he he denied one of Tony's ideas for a story because Tony's ideas are shit, dude. Fuck, you people are so easily amused, hey? Anywho, Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs. This is something that's interesting to see. But again, Powerhouse, Powerhouse Hobbs has been creatively fucked around for the longest time. The thing with Wardlow, with the TNT title, and and with uh what's his name what's his name the dude that doesn't how, how have i forgotten his name how have i forgotten his name i've forgotten his name how have i forgotten his name the dude that does the diamond cutter now oh my god uh cody rose uh uh nightmare factory what's his name i don't forgot his name qt marshall how fucked is that i forgot his name <laughs> anyway they did that whole angle and it went nowhere uh and Hobbs is back to being a heel again it's just, what a it's waste so much time with bullshit and, and and you see Q2 Marshall in Triple A and he's the way he's presented on that show he's he's 10 times the wrestler you've seen on AEW he's really actually quite good but anywho uh I really feel like Hobbs is up to the ante with the physicality recently he popped those hips, bro, and he belly to belly Miro like it was nothing. I actually wrote before this match got to its conclusion that now's the time to bring in Lana or CJ Perry. <laughs> and she ended up showing up. Uh, the crowd were into this, very into this. I thought Miro needed the win. It was very solid. He uh, kicked out of the great span on the pan by Powerhouse Hobbs. Um, but eventually Miro got the win. Hobbs attacked after the match. Here she comes, bro. Here she comes. Oh, my God. Damn it. She's so hot. <laughs> Lana makes her entrance here, uh, and Hobbs powders after Miro nails him. And then, for some reason, Miro powders from his own wife. We know it's your wife, bro. We know it's your wife. Uh, anywho, 
We finally got the package that I've been waiting for this whole time. I don't know why they didn't bring her in early on. Let's move forward. TBS Championship. Chris Statlander, the champion, taking on Ruby Soho. Um, props to Ruby. Her hair is looking sick. Great stuff with Soraya at ringside running away from Chris Statlander like a little wimp. Um, but Soraya was paying dividends at ringside, which was very cool. I really thought that now is probably the time to bring Jay Cargill back to have that proper match with Statlander at the next pay-per-view and start that angle as opposed to, I don't know, having a title reign that goes for so long, undefeated for so long, and then losing after already wrestling a match. How anticlimactic was that? Uh, such juvenile booking. The way that they booked her title loss, come on, dude. Anywho, um, this is a great avalanche power slam. Uh, another uh, a poison rana uh, near fall. Here comes Tony Storm. She turns on Ruby. Chris lays out Ruby. More interference, everyone. More interference. And again, one women's match on a show. No, I'm not counting the six women tag on zero hour. How hard is it to put in? Look at Impact. The Impact Wrestling, they have less matches on their pay-per-views and they still have at least two or three women's matches. Same with NWA. It's not hard. But no, whatever. Who gives a shit? Let's move forward. Strap match. Ricky Starks, Brian Danielson. Did not write many notes here, to be honest with you. I'm really surprised. Um, again, this angle is very forced. You could see Brian Danielson trying very, very hard on Zero Hour to sell the fact that he really wanted to be a part of this match. Despite the fact that Ricky Starks is supposed to be a heel, Brian Danielson is in the Blackpool Combat Club. He is a heel. Uh, but Tony wants to shoehorn this in because he fired Punk. He fired Punk and he shouldn't have, and I'll get to it right at the end of this review. <clears throat> Anyway, we're at this point, and I'm like, we've still got two hours left in the show. Just great. Starks is in control here uh, for the early going. Uh, we get a blade job from Danielson. I really thought that maybe Steamboat was going to help Starks win and turn heel. <laughs> you never know sometimes. Um, but anywho, look, I didn't have much written here. I actually didn't really care about the match because it was so forced. You know, he, Tony's just trying to make up the fact that CM Punk's not going to be there, so he had to get Danielson to come back sooner. Brian chokes Ricky out, whatever. It, was, it wasn't bad, to be honest with you. Let's move forward. Uh, the back, Blackpool Combat Club of Claudio Castagnoli and Willa Yuda take on Eddie Kingston and Katsuyuri Shibata. This was pretty good. Um, I really feel like after I first saw Shibata wrestle Yuda and win the pure title from him. He owned him the whole match. I really feel like every time he gets in there with Yuda, he should just destroy him every time. He should dominate him every time. Just Yuda, just, there's nothing he can do. He, he, this dude has forever got his number. I think that's a really cool story. Um, but again, another Ring of Honor storyline here on an AEW pay per view. Come on, man. Like, if you're a fan of both products, surely you'd want to keep them separate, right? Surely you want to maybe, I don't know, maybe bring a Gabe Sapolsky to a book Ring of Honor. Oh, no, Tony would never do that. You know why? Because the next thing, oh, the Ring of Honor booking is actually quite good oh, in comparison to AEW. Then Tony will start feeling very insecure about himself. Anywho, Willie Yuta has a stupid head. Uh, Eddie was getting pounded on pounded on here. You know what? I saw Claudio and Shibata work together here, and I'm like, they have huge chemistry straight away. Somebody book that angle now. That will work. Those matches will work. Trust me. And trust me, I'm not like the biggest work rate guy. You know, my favorite kind of wrestling is Val Venus getting his cock cut off. <laughs> that's, that's what I prefer in wrestling. But I would love to see a few matches between Shibata and Pastagnoli. Um, Will Yuta gets tagged in. This honestly felt like a TV main event, despite my compliments of, of, of Claudio and uh, Shibata. Um, Eddie ends up kicking out of the finishing move of Claudio. Uh, there's a Northern Lights bomb. Yuta interrupts and then 
Claudio beat Eddie with an uppercut. Fuck off. Let's, let's move forward. An uppercut. Come on, man. Pete, everyone kicks out of everything in this company and he wins with an uppercut. Give me a fucking break. Uh, coming up next, uh, Takeshita takes on Kenny Omega in the match that we've been waiting. We've all been waiting for, haven't we? We've, we've all been on the edge of our seating waiting for this, this contest between these two. Um, I look, I, I like Takeshita. Uh, and I, you know what? I don't mind Kenny either. Um, there was a let's go Kenny chant. Chicago, you're letting me down here. I was expecting you to rip the whole of these guys from the elite. You did a little bit for the young bucks, but not really. You guys suck. You just bailed on punk immediately, didn't you? <laughs> um, early in this match, Kenny got back suplex onto his head. It was sick. Uh, but the way he's bumping, the way he does his stuff, he's not going to be wrestling in 10 years' time. So you've got to start thinking about the future, Tony, because Kenny and the Bucks, look, they don't wrestle that often, but when they do, they cop a lot of crap. And without having the callus uh, from wrestling all the time, it's just going to break you down quicker. It's obvious. That's why they had so many injuries, you know, in the last few years. But anyway, uh, this is Kenny's latest vanity project, I suppose, him and Takeshita. Uh, I'm sure Tony's thinking Takeshita's like AEW's uh, Masato Tanaka or something like that. Uh, because still, let's be honest. Okay, the reason for this feud with Don Callis, oh, uh, uh, Kenny's paying more attention to the Young Bucks than me. They were, a, they were a team. They were all a team. Why would Don Callis care that much to turn on him? Fuck. Such juvenile booking. Juvenile, mate. Um so anyway, we all know that Kenny Omega versus CM Punk was going to be the money feud. All right. Just saying that. Takeshita, you know what? He's better as a heel. I thought this match went too long. I thought there were too many matches on this show. WWE don't have enough and AEW have too many. But look, the Elite got their company back, didn't they? Uh, Takeshita, you know what? I thought he needed the win. Um, and you know what? Most of this match, I was like, Kenny's hitting all this wicked shit and he's never going for a pin. I don't know if he was too busy thinking about his spots, but I'm like, man, bro, you got to go for the pin when it looks like you could beat him at that point in time. Uh, there's a blue thunder bomb off the top rope, and what do you know? Kenny kicked out. <laughs> uh, Takeshi grabs a sc screwdriver that uh, was implemented in the match by Don Callis. The referee grabs it. Uh, and then Kenny kicks out of everything. <laughs> but eventually Takeshita got the win, which was the right move. Let's move forward. You know, I'm sure they're going to have a blow-off match at the next pay-per-view. Uh, I just hope that when they're done with it, Takeshita doesn't disappear off television. I hope that they, like, continue wanting to keep trying with him. Because if you're going this far with him to beat Kenny, then you better keep going. You know? Anywho... God, the next match I barely have any notes for as well. Bullet Club Gold take on FTR, the Young Bucks. So that's the Guns and JY and uh, Juice Robinson taking on FTR and the Young Bucks. So there were some CM Punk chants at the beginning of this. Uh, Excalibur talking about the Young Bucks being in the conversation as the greatest of all time. Mate, they're not even in the top 50. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks. They are not even in the top 50. Fuck me. Greatest of all time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what a joke. Anywho, um, look, this went too long. I, there was good back and forth, back and forth between them all. Um, again, people in the teams are not standing on the ring apron. Nick Jackson was standing at ringside without being on the ring apron for the longest time. Why would you do that? Of course, Rick Knox is the referee in this one. <laughs> um, but you know what? I was really confused. The Young Bucks were getting hate for the CM Punk thing, but not Hangman or Kenny. If anyone should be getting hate, it should be Hangman. Anywho, I wanted Bullet Club Gold to win. And they did. Fuck yes, dude. They did win, right? They did. I know that. AW all out. <laughs> I've already forgotten. I'm pretty sure they won, right? All out cage match. I'm positive that they won. And I was like, no way, man. Like, 
I was so ex- I was so expectant of 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 your beloved young bucks winning once again. Yeah, they did lose, didn't they? Because one of them got pinned. Yes. Oh, little pill goal one. <laughs> I'm getting excited about it. I watched it like five hours ago and I've already forgotten. <laughs> but you know what? I'm digging Jay White. I'm digging Juice Robinson. And you know what? The guns pop me every time. They really do. Um, but yeah, look, I'll get to it when I get to it. The main event is now time right here on this review. It's the AW International title which is a title that I give more of a shit about than the NXT Heritage Cup <laughs> because I give more about anything other than that. Uh, Orange Cassidy defending against John Moxley. Gee willikers, I wonder who's winning this one. He's he's defended the title successfully 31 times. Very good. Well, it's, it's, it's not real. It's, someone wrote it in the storyline. Uh, pencil was the reason why Orange Cassidy was such a dominant champion. <laughs> Don't mean to ruin it for everyone, but look, uh, I couldn't see Orange Cassidy beating John Moxley here, uh, and it was time for him to drop it. Uh, John was killing him early on here. Uh, some good back and forth. Um, Jesus Christ, my notes are terrible here. I don't even understand what I'm talking about. Orange turned red? What does that mean? What are you being turned red? <laughs> uh, but it felt like at some stages, John Moxley was victimizing Orange Cassidy. Um, so great back and forth for the finish. There was a LaBelle lock. There was a beach break on the concrete. Uh, two orange punches and Moxley wouldn't go down. He hit a third, then he hit a spear. Big kick out. You know, good main event style, you know, kick outs here and false finishes. Um but uh, John Moxley beats Orange Cassidy with, is, was it called the Death Rider? I don't know. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, Moxley wins the international title in the main event of All Out 2023. Man, too many wrestling shows in one week. Last weekend was All In. It was, uh, there was Impact Wrestling. Uh, there was, you know, there's been payback. There's, there's been, there's, there's another, is it MLW? There's too many shows going on at the moment. I'm getting burned out. <laughs> but um, this is pretty good, you know. Like the thing is with AEW is that is things is things are pretty messy, you know. The matches themselves, because you can't blame the wrestlers. The wrestlers put together some pretty good matches, right? But it's just so messy because essentially what's going on here, and I'm being honest, and I'm not just saying it just to say it, and I'm not saying it because I'm looking to hate on AEW, but the guy who's in charge of writing the show isn't very good at it. Okay, we can all admit that he's not very good at it. You know, some of you out there, you've raised into glasses, no matter what he does, if he farts, you'd sniff it and be like, hmm, flowers, you know, but... <laughs> The thing is, he's not very good at it. He's got too many people on roster. He's he's burned out. It's bound to happen with anyone. No, he's not a genius. He has no creative writing experience, right? Anyone can book a card of good matches or potential good matches. Anyone can do that. Uh, he needs help. Uh, I feel like AEW is a mess. It's not just a mess storyline wise. Um, it's not just a mess. Uh, because a lot of it's very juvenile booking and very beginner's book of one-on-one. One-on-one, 101. It's not just that. It's it's also everything behind the scenes is a mess. It's a mess. Before the punk thing, before the punk thing, there was shit going on before that. Don't blame the talent. Blame the guy in charge for not ensuring that once that happened, that shit never happened again. Yes, I know it happened all the time back in the day, but that's what it was back then, back in those days, you know? The dude does not have enough. He doesn't have enough testicular fortitude. He's not. He doesn't have any balls. He 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 thought his life was being threatened by CM Punk punching Jack Perry in the face and choking him and accidentally knocking over some monitors and maybe lunging towards Tony. You know why he lunged towards him? I'll get to it. Okay, I'm going to try and get this done in a nutshell. When CM Punk first joined AEW, that whole time it was all a loving. Everyone was so happy about CM Punk being in AEW, being back in professional wrestling. Everyone was chuffed about it. People in the crowd crying 
over CM Punk returning. Those first few months, did you hear one negative thing about him doing anything backstage? Anything to anyone at all? Did you hear one thing about that? The guy even worked with Eddie Kingston in his second program and they don't like each other, yet they still were able to have a match with one another. So why is it when CM Punk is now Tony's favorite thing and he's now in line to beat Hangman Page for the AEW World Championship, why is it now things start going awry? Why is it then when he's about to become the champion that Hangman Page out of the blue, there's no way that these two even knew each other on, on a level that would would, would would have any sort of heat whatsoever. Why would Hangman Page go into business for himself and mention Colt Cabana in a promo that was not approved by a punk beforehand? Because when they do these shoot promos, they always they always have a little bit of chin wag beforehand to make sure that they're, they're cool with what they're going to say. But he went into business for himself. Of course, that pissed Punk off. Punk is a little bit more old school. Punk doesn't like that kind of shit. He is the veteran in comparison to Hangman Page, right? So, of course, he's pissed off about it. Of course, Punk wants to retaliate because he's insulted that someone would do that when Punk didn't do anything in the first place to warrant that. You know why it happened? You know why Hangman Page fucking went out there and did that? Because the elite gap in between this... I'm, I, and I'm just making this up, you know? I'm estimating. I'm guessing. But I can. I wouldn't throw it past them, you know? I bet you when the car rides to the shows, they're hanging out with one another. Man, it's pretty shit, isn't it? Like, it seems like Tony's, like, new favorite thing is CM Punk. This company is supposed to be about us. It's supposed to be about us. And, and Punk's come in here and he's taking our spot. What are we going to do, guys? What are we going to do? And they're getting so they're getting each other worked up about it. So Hangman Page has he's starting to get himself so worked up that he, you know, they're talking about, oh man, Cole Cabana's not wrestling here anymore. Like it's totally Punk's fault. So of course he has to say something. They are insecure about their spot. I'm gonna end this very soon, okay? They're insecure about their spot. This is where the problem began. They instigated it. Hangman Page instigated it. Did CM Punk instigate anything that's taken place? Did he instigate any of it? Think about it. Look at the facts. I'm not some CM Punk dick rider, okay? I don't agree with everything he thinks or, or wants or likes, you know? But the fact of the matter is I look at things for what they are, okay? They instigated this bullshit. Hangman Page started it. Punk retaliated because that's the way he is. Don't poke the hornet's nest if you know the hornet's nest is there. You know Punk is not someone to be messed with. He will retaliate. That's just the person he is. Jesus Christ. It builds and builds and builds. They yap into the dirt sheets because they're the best. The Young Bucks finishing move is called the fucking Meltzer driver. They, 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 they fucking blow their nose and they get five stars for a fucking match from him. Alvarez fucking loves them. They, all, they these fucking guys fucking love these guys. They yap to him and them about Punk trying to make him look bad. Of course, Punk is going to start getting more and more elevated and upset because he knows that they're fucking with him, and he's only been there like what six months, however long. They're fucking with him because they're insecure, worried about this spot. He's taken the belt from Hangman Page. He gets injured. He comes back. He beats Moxley for the belt. And he's had enough. And yes, he says the shit he says on the fucking uh, scrum. Brawl out. Again, as far as instigation is concerned, did they need to storm into his into his locker room? Do they need to storm in there? They're the EVPs of the company. They're supposed to be the professional ones. Punk should be <laughs> expected to be unprofessional because he's supposed to be just one of the wrestlers. They're supposed to be executive vice presidents and they burst into his locker room. Sorry, but something like that. Yeah. I'm not surprised that the Hornet's Nest itself, CM Punk, retaliated again when they burst in there because they're not happy with what he said. Maybe he shouldn't have said what he said, right? We'll get to the end of this very soon, okay? Punk's gone. They're gone. 
suspensions, etc. They get brought back to TV. He's still injured. They make fun of him on TV. They do the biting thing and they 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 they, they do the the buckshot lariat botch that Punk did. You know, I get it. But again, you're poking the hornet's nest. They 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 they're, th they're thinking he's not coming back. But then Warner Brothers Discovery, they know he's a draw. They know he's the number one merchandise guy. They want him back. So he's back. And I bet they're like, oh, damn it. I thought we got rid of him. I'm guaranteeing you there's a fucking conspiracy going on here. There's no way. There's no way that this just happened to happen. Again, Punk did not instigate anything. Okay? Look at the facts. Okay, Collision's his show. From what I gather, Jack Perry wanted to do some sort of spot with real glass. Punk said we don't do stuff like that on this show. From what I gather, someone told Punk that this is what Jack wanted to do. Maybe you should tell him not to do it. Jack Perry is an entitled little dipshit. I was going to say the C-U-N-T word, but I can't. I don't want to do that. He's entitled... He doesn't want to listen to veterans. He's already bagged out Billy Gunn saying, oh, all Billy Gunn tells me is that I shouldn't do so many destroyers. I don't, so I don't listen to it. You listen to the way he talks in interviews about veterans and all that. You see him at the Q&A in England with Anna Jay talking about Dr. Tom Pritchard and how he pulled a face when, he, when she said his name. You hear the story about him uh, being rude to a fan who had paid for a picture with him and he said that he wasn't going to take a picture with him. And someone res recently responded to me on Twitter, uh, he's a hill, you know. It was before the hill turned dipshit. So you know that this guy is a bit of a piece of work, right? He's an entitled little, you know, I'm a cunt, right? <laughs> right? He doesn't like the fact that Punk denied him using the glass. So he goes and runs to his little friends, the EVPs, Young Bucks and all that. And Punk would let me use the glass. And then they start fucking yapping back at him. Oh, they probably, he probably didn't let you do it because he knows that you're friends with us. So now he's thinking, I've got to prove myself to the Young Bucks and Kenny and, and Hangman. So he thinks that the right thing to do is to go into business for himself like Hangman did on pay-per-view, biggest pay-per-view of all time in front of 80,000 people live and millions around the world and look into the camera and directly talk shit to CM Punk. I don't give a fuck if it was CM Punk, if it was Miro, if it was Brian Cage, if it was Wardlow, if it was Orange fucking Cassidy, if it was Marco Stunt, I don't give a fuck who it is. If someone looks into a camera live on pay-per-view and shits on you when you aren't even you're not even in the middle of an angle with that person and it is something that is actual pers actually personal and it's on purpose, I don't give a fuck. Any of those guys I mentioned will be standing there waiting for that little cunt to walk backstage to be like, what the fuck is your problem? I don't give a shit. Oh, he did it for heel heat? Why would he do something for heel heat that no one has context of and no one even knows the backing story of? It has nothing to do with the fucking story of the match with him and Hook. Why would that be the fucking thing? That's bullshit. That's a lie. That's a fucking reason to try and get out of shit, right? I'm getting mad now. <laughs> it's bullshit. I hate bullshit, man. I hate when people are full of shit. It is so obvious that this is all full of shit. All right? Hangman instigated shit. The elite instigated shit. And this time, Jack Perry instigated shit. And every time CM Punk retaliated and he's fired for it, get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here. That is bullshit. You get rid of your number one merchandise seller, your biggest name on the roster. You get rid of him for these little cunts. All they wanted was to keep their little company to be about them and they can do their little vanity projects and get paid all this money to wrestle once every three weeks, if that. That's what it is. They wanted to get rid of him because he wanted to come in, implement changes, and make it more realistic and not full of this bullshit, this indie bullshit that they do, which alienates the casual fan. And the casual fan is the most important fan 
that you could ever find. Why? Because you take that casual fan, you make that casual fan a hardcore fan, and then you've grown your fan base. You don't try to look for casual fans to keep them being casual fans. You get a casual fan and then you turn them hardcore. That's the point of a casual fan. That's what Meltzer and shit don't even understand about casual fans. Casual TV viewers who like wrestling a little bit, you got to bring them in, make them become diehards, bro. That's how it happens. Anywho, Dunsky, I've made my point. AEW made the biggest mistake of their life. Tony made the biggest mistake of his life by firing Phil Brooks. And the next episode that Tony, Tony rocks up a collision in front of the Chicago crowd and addresses them. What are you fucking thinking, bro? You know that you're going to get booed out of the building. It's embarrassing, bro. Anywho, that's it. As far as All Out is concerned, I'm, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. This is, again, my stock standard rating that I give shows that don't offend me, that weren't bad, but what I saw, you know, was entertaining at least. There we have it. I'm California. This is the WCWA Network. Please check us out on Patreon. We've got a whole bunch of free reviews there for the next few weeks. For $3 a month, though, once the next few weeks are over, you can, for $3 a month, you can get these reviews. And it's like, how much, like, was it like 30 cents a day? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not very good at math. <laughs> but honestly, some good stuff there. Not just that, but there's a whole plethora of content on there that's too hot for our YouTube channel. Uh, also, check us out on Thunder Mifflin on the prowrestlingtees.com website. Uh, we've got four web, web, shirt, web shirt designs. We've got four shirt designs on that website. Please check it out. Uh, and also check out the Ryzen Network and hashtag Pro Wrestling, a great chat room there with a great bunch of guys. California, I'm done. I've ranted too much. Thank you for joining me here for AW All Out and our review here on the WCWA Network. And we will see you down the fucking road. Thank you. <laughs> Ridiculous. Network, that's the way we play. Good yeah. God Almighty. No way. Network, that's the way we play. Get yeah. puppies. No way. Network, that's the way we play. Yeah. All announcement has been paid for by the WZWA Network. <laughs>